Thank you all for being here. Thank you, thank you. You guys are awesome. Okay, I'm nervous. Let's see. I have 20 minutes. <coughs> so my plan is to uh, describe some things the Zcash company has done and, um, and then reveal a whole bunch of formerly private internal facts about uh, Zcash company's finances and stuff like that and uh, then describe uh, where, like the big picture of where I think we have to start uh, a communal conversation about where we're going in the long term in the big picture. This is the first thing we did. Uh, the Zcash company was formed about four years ago by raising about $3 million from some investors. And then we spent most of that in creating and launching Zcash 1.0, which was codenamed Sprout. And this was a huge step forward because uh, as you, at least half of you already know, I guess, since half of you are techies, uh, uh, Zcash Sprout uses the, the zero knowledge technique for protecting privacy, um, which is the, in my opinion, is the only known method so far that's good enough to actually protect privacy in practice. It was a, a big step forward. Um, and here you see most of the team at that time, <laughs> two years ago, uh, on the day of Sprout's activation. And then last night was the next step. Here's a most or at least half of a much bigger team that you can see in this picture that was gathered in a, a room here last night for the activation of Overwinter. Overwinter is at a technical level a modest improvement, but at a governance level it's a really important precedent. So at the technical level, Overwinter has about three features that are worth mentioning. Um, there's replay protection so that if in the future there's a chain fork and there are two like little Zcash babies chains, um, people with the replay protection, users won't, uh, when they try to spin their coins on one of the chains, be accidentally or maliciously uh, spinning their coins on the other chain. And then there's um, a performance, a fix for a performance bug so we can have bigger transactions that actually can, can work. And then there's transaction expiry. So if for some reason your transaction isn't getting mined, then after about an hour it will become invalid due to the advancing block height. And then you will know that it can never be mined and uh, knowing that would be better than still continuing to wonder. So in my opinion, that's a UX improvement. Uh, but Overwinter, more importantly, is a demonstration of a consensual decentralized governance process because it's a backwards incompatible change to the decentralized open protocol. And there are some people out there who might disagree with who will say that deploying a backwards incompatible change to an open network like this is a violation of consent because the users of the current version are, using, are relying on or using or choosing to rely on the current protocol and changing it out from under them is immoral. And Overwinter is a demonstration of our answer to that which is that the overwinter upgrade that happened last night was 100% opt-in. There were no people in the world who were running the old Sprout software who found themselves then running the overwinter software unless they decided they wanted to, went and found it and downloaded it and replaced their Sprout software with their overwinter software. So there's at least two layers to this. And by the end of this talk, we hope to get to the third layer. But the bottom layer is consent, opt-in. And um, that's really important to us. And in fact, like Josh said, we're here because of privacy. To me, privacy is just because of consent. And decentralization is just because of consent. It, it's all the same thing in my mind. So the bottom layer is we made a backwards incompatible protocol change, but without violating anyone's consent. And the second layer is, well then, we had to inform them so they could make an informed choice. Um, so there was a long uh, process of education. This is a big part of what the company does, is education of different parties. 
And uh, as it turns out, they all opted in. Everyone chose to switch to the new protocol last night. And then along the way, the other thing we've been working on is called Zcash Sapling, planned to activate in October of, not on October 20, but on, in October, okay, that's, an, that's a mistake. It's planned to activate on October 28th, which is the uh, two-year anniversary of Zcash, the two-year birthday of Zcash. Um, as some of you may know, Sapling is another technical breakthrough. Oh my God, I'm way less than halfway through with my slides. So I'm gonna have to talk twice as fast. Sapling is super great, and Sean Bo is gonna give a whole talk about it soon. And the point of it is that it makes this advanced privacy and security technology efficient enough that we can then push it to become ubiquitous, which we don't have yet. Like privacy and the privacy technology are necessary for achieving our mission, but they're not sufficient. Then the other thing we do is education. So here's an example of the kind of uh, kind of people, there's many different sort of people that we go around educating and among them are regulators. So we flew to New York many times and explained the technology to the New York Department of Financial Services, whom you probably don't know, is the most aggressive regulator of cryptocurrencies in the United States and probably in the world. And we argued to them that well, so we explained the facts about the technology, and then we advocated, and we said that we believe user-protecting technology is, uh, is part of the solution, not part of the problem. That user-protecting technology is a building block of a well-governed democracy, that it serves the purposes they have to protect their people from uh, being targeted by criminals and um, their responsibility to form safe and efficient markets and consumer protection and everything else, and national infrastructure and whatever. And uh, I don't know what they're thinking because they're government officials and they don't, they, they're the ones who ask the questions. So uh, they didn't tell me what they were thinking. But after we had that conversation, then they put out an official press release on their official government website that said New York Department of Financial Services has approved Zcash, including Z addresses, as, yeah. So it's really significant. Um, so it's now one, so Zcash, including Z addresses, is now one of the six approved cryptocurrencies in the United States. Okay, and then Gemini is this uh, exchange that's regulated by the New York Department of Financial Services, and they're very conservative and cautious and regulatorily compliant and all that. And they now have Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Zcash as the three coins that they'll sell to their, or they'll, they'll allow their customers to trade. Uh, what else? Okay, oh yeah. I still have six minutes to expose all of our finances and tell you the important questions I want your help answering. Uh, we have five and a half million dollars in the bank, but uh, because you know fiat currency is very volatile and it could crash, we're also holding 29,000 Zcash coins. <laughs> At yesterday's price is Zcash coin, that 29,000 Zcash coins would be worth about five million dollars. Uh, and along the way, we invested in two little startups, Agoric and Starkware. Agoric is here today, here this week, so you can talk to them. Uh, so we have the, the asset of ownership of shares of these startups. Um, we make 6,125 Zcash coins. We receive 6,125 Zcash coins from the blockchain every month, and that's our sole income. So after we spent the $3 million from the investors three years ago making Sprout, ever since then, we've just been relying on this. And we're spending, and 6,125 coins at yesterday's prices is about a million dollars. And we're spending about half a million dollars a month. Uh, and we have 26 employees as of yesterday. <sighs> I'm, <laughs> I'm very uh, proud of our team. Um, and 500K for 26 employees, I think is kind of mid ballpark for a startup. It's about normal. And we have these weird one-off expenses, like we spend a lot of money on travel, but um, we also spent $600,000 on hiring independent security auditors for Overwinter and Sapling to study the cryptography, protocol implementation, and so forth. That's that. And here's the Zcash 
issuance on an ongoing basis. So every block or every month, there's a whole bunch of Zcash coins released by the mining process. And as you know, 80% of them go to the lucky miners. And 80% is 175,000 coins per month. So that's about $30 million a month. And that's the fourth biggest cryptocurrency in the world in terms of the value of issuance or the value of mining. So mining is really, really important because there's a lot of money at stake um, and there have both good and bad consequences. But we're giving out $30 million a month as a community, as, as like everyone who uses Zcash is handing out $30 million a month to miners, whoever they are. And the second biggest recipient is the Zcash Foundation uh, due to a bunch of donations from people who had rights originally when it launched years ago, a bunch of people have donated to the Zcash Foundation. So this is not baked into the consensus rules, this is donations, but the Zcash Foundation gets 3% of all the coins every month. And the company, that's 6,125 that we, that fund the entire operation of the company so far, that's the next one there. Um, and these, these rules are coded to take effect from, for four consecutive years, from the launch two years ago of Zcash 1.0 until two years from now. Um, and you can see me in there, I have zero, I, I receive 0.9% of the coins personally every month, which is about 2,000 coins. It's totally uncomfortable exposing all these facts about my company, but there you have it. Okay, so that's just about the company, and the reason I think the most important outcome from this conference is, is much bigger than that. All of that about the company is just one building block that you need to take into account, because there are these massive open questions that we need to be addressing as a community starting now. Now's the time and you are the best possible group to do it. Uh, almost everyone that I would want to have in this conversation is already in this room or is due to arrive later today. So first of all, so roadmap, sustainability, decentralization. Which order? Okay, roadmap. The company has proposed a roadmap for the company's activities, but if Zcash is to achieve what we all hope for, uh, we'll have to have a lot more than this. But the company has, uh, we posted a blog post this morning that you can find that says, with the remaining two years of this funding and, and you know, with our current team and all of our constraints, Anthony says we have five minutes. Cool. Um, what does the company think we can do well and is the highest priority to do over the next two years? and we posted a blog post saying that, and the emphasis on, in it is on usability and ubiquity of a private currency. Um, because we've already succeeded at a certain technological level, but we haven't succeeded, and for that matter, neither has Bitcoin or Ethereum or anyone else, on a usability and adoption level. Um, so that's the, the priority you'll see. But that roadmap that we posted for the company is an invitation to, uh, to conversation. If you believe the company should prioritize something else instead or whatever, or if you can help in a specific way, this is, this is the, the time to begin that conversation. And in fact, we have a specific plan to finalize that roadmap and commit to it so everyone will know what the company is gonna do for the next two years, and we're gonna finalize that in August. Um, so sustainability is a critical question that um, the community has to decide for itself. And the question is, how should the development of Zcash be funded after the, that funding that I described earlier ends in two years? And decentralization, I think, is the most important thing. I actually think it's more important than usability. So here's Here's the kind of question that's a totally legit question that different people can have uh, different reasonable, well-informed people can have different answers to. If we have to choose one or the other, and we might, which one should we do first or best, decentralization or usability? 
Well, my answer is decentralization, even though the company's roadmap for the next two years is on usability. But decentralization is bigger than the company. And I said that we already had opt-in and informed protocol upgrades, and I think that's a necessary basis for any decentralization because uh, it's one of those things where if you don't have consent and if you don't have privacy at the underlying layer, you can't build it on top. Um, but now there's the question of what, what backwards incompatible protocol upgrades shall we propose? So far, no one, overwinter and sapling are no-brainers, right? Nobody doesn't want an overwinter and a sapling, but if Zcash is to satisfy its mission, it, the community will have to make many decisions which are vigorously opposed by a faction, possibly a large faction. That's my belief. And so the process of <laughs> coordinating and deciding that is the most important question. Okay, those are all my slides. Anthony says I'm almost out of time. Thank you all so much for being here. I am so grateful to all of you for being here. Thank you. <laughs>